Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a chest shop in your uh, Hypixel housing. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you what that means real quick. Um, so you can't make GUIs in housing, so the best way to do it right now is through chest shops. And basically, when you open a chest, you can have a menu. Um, and we have a bunch of things here. We have white stained glass and red stained glass just as decoration. But we have a bunch of items too that will do stuff. So for example, um, if we grab the red stained glass, it'll actually disappear from our inventory. So we can't actually grab it, even if we grab it all. It'll just go away. Um, and then to get the items back, we can just open it up again. We have a th few things here. I have a thing that sets your health to 100. Um, I have a thing here that will reset your health back to 20 or like the default amount. We have something here that when um, you have it, it will teleport you up 100 blocks. There we go. Let the fall back down. I hope I didn't enable fall damage. Yeah, we're good. And then we have two things here that are a bit more complex. We have craft a bow and craft a sword. So you see on the scoreboard, we have 899 gold. If we shift click on the craft a bow to bring it to our inventory, you can see it disappears and we get a normal bow um, and we get our gold taken away by 100. Um, and then for the sword, we're going to need two diamonds and one stick. So basically, this is kind of like a replacement to um, crafting. Grab one stick, two diamonds. Go back in survival, but you do, need to re you do need to be in survival for this. Shift left click on the craft a sword. And there we go. It removed our items and we got a diamond sword. So now I'm going to do a step-by-step -step guide on how you can do that yourself. Okay, so to start, we're going to set up a poison loop. The info card in the top right will have a more in-depth tutorial that I made. But if you want a quick tutorial, I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so go to your housing settings or go to your housing menu, go to house settings, go to event actions, go to player join. Inside here, we're going to add a potion effect. This po this effect will be poison. The duration will be for 2 million seconds, which means pretty much the entire time while they're in the house. And the level to 10, so it ticks the fastest. And override existing effects need to be on. Now, if your house includes PvP or respawning, I would add that to the player respawn event because when they respawn, they don't keep any effects. So adding it here will just make sure that they keep the hat, the effect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go to player damage inside here, add an action, add a conditional. Inside this conditional, we're going to test if the damage cause is poison, which is it. If it is, we're going to go to if actions and cancel the event, which means you won't take any damage. And now last step, we're going to go back to uh, play PvP plus damage settings and make sure poison slash wither damage is set to true. So now we can rejoin our house, and as you can see, we have the poison effect, and if we go in survival, we shouldn't take any damage, um, but we do have poison. Okay, so now I'm going to go through one by one and how I made each item. Now it's pretty self-explanatory once I show you how to do these three, because um, you're literally just adding a default housing action. But for these, it's a bit more complex, so yeah. So I'll go into more detail on how these works. Okay, so for starters, we're going to go into creative, and we're just going to grab the items from the test chest. We're going to grab the white stained glass as well as the red stained glass. We're going to go to housing menu, go to house settings, go to functions. We're going to create a new one. We're just going to call it chest GUI. Now, it's also very important that you label your functions. Um, you can add a lore to them, like a description. I personally don't do that. I don't really see the need. The name and the icon is fine. And I would just say edit your icon to like something that makes sense, like a chest. Um, so it's easier to find when you're looking in other places. But anyways, we're going to go inside here, go to the add action. Now, for these, you would think that you could just go to remove item, but I'm going to show you why that doesn't work. Okay, so now we have the, the function. We're going to go to house settings, let's go to event actions inside the player damage, and just make sure we add the function here. Okay, so now they're in survival. As you can see, it did remove the item, so it does as intended. But if we were to grab a diamond sword or an apple for eating uh and we go into survival you can see when we right click the sword now i'm just holding right click it bugs out it it unblocks and blocks and if we go to eat an apple it kind of just bugs out um so yeah to prevent that what we're going to want to do is go to back to the settings go to functions go back in here instead of removing the item which we're just going to grab again from here we're going to want to instead check if the player has the item so go into conditional inside this conditional if the player has the item um, and keep these as, unless you want to change these, keep these as default, it's fine. Go to if actions and remove the item from there. That way, if we go in survival, we lose the item, but we sh can write, oh. Okay, so it looks like they didn't work at first, but a simple rejoin to your house seemed to fix it. If we go back and take the item, yeah, it does remove it. And that does fix it, so now we don't have the issue anymore. So I'm just going to do the same thing with the red stained glass. Again, housing menu, go to, oops, sorry. Go to the your function, add another conditional. Inside here, if has item, then we're just going to want to remove the item. 
And there we go. So that's step one done. Just kind of removing items that you don't want the player to have. So if we grab the item, as you can see, we don't keep it. We can grab them all. Grab all these. We don't have it. We can open it up to see that again. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make the reset health as well as the set health to 100. So inside the housing menu, we're going to go to functions. Go back to our function. Add a new conditional. If the player has the reset health anywhere in their inventory, we can go inside here and remove that item so they don't keep it as well as set their health to the default 20. And this is just using one of these actions. You can replace this with anything here. And now we can create another conditional inside this conditional, check if the player has the set health to 100. And then in, in that case, then we would remove that item so they don't keep it, of course, and set the max health to 100. Okay, so we just throw these out of our inventory. We can go back into survival. Oh, that's a texture pack that does that too. Just ignore it. Um, we can open this chest and we can go to our select or set health to 100, hold shift, left click to put it in our inventory. And there we go, we have 100 health. And we can open up this again and go to reset health, shift click, and now our health is reset back to the default 20. Okay, the last simple action we do is just teleport the player 100 blocks up. Put that in our inventory, again, housing menu, inside your function, add into the conditional. Inside this conditional, we're gonna check if the player has this item, which if they do, remove the item and teleport the player. And in order to teleport them up, we're gonna go to custom coordinates, do a little squiggly line. I don't know what this is called. I'll put it on the screen if I remember. Um, 100 and boom. So basically we're getting the player's Y position and adding 100. If we wanted to do negative 100, we can do this. Um, but anyway, do that. Um, oh, what? Wait, what? I didn't know you could do that. You could throw out your housing menu. I didn't know that. Well, anyway. Um, I got a little distracted. We can go to the chest, go to our teleport 100 blocks up, and there we go, it removes the item and it teleports us 100 blocks up. Okay, so finally, but part of the reason you click on this tutorial, I'll show you how you could do requirements, like you need two diamonds and one stick to craft a sword, or 100 gold to craft a bow, or I guess buy a bow, but just, I guess ignore that. First, we're gonna do the bow, put that in our inventory, go to our housing settings, go to the functions, chest UI, Inside here, we could go to our conditional. If the player has the item, craft a bow, as well as having the stat gold being greater than, how much did we say, 100, then we'll remove the gold, or sorry, remove the item, as well as remove the gold. So that's 100. And we'll give them a normal bow. So we'll just spawn another bow, go back to our thing, give them the normal bow. And we'll just turn on a lot of multiple, because why not? Throw out both of these items, actually, so they don't just get put everywhere. We're just going to delete it all. Now we can go into survival, and as you can see on our scoreboard, we have 799 gold. Go to here, take it, it'll remove it, remove 100, as well as give us our bow. Okay, so in a different scenario, let's say we had zero gold. We could take the item, and as you can see, we keep that item. We don't lose any gold. It still is the item from the chest, and we obviously don't want that. So what we're going to want to do is basically add a, another conditional to this function. So in this case, it's having our conditional check if we have the, both the gold and the bow, but but otherwise, if we just remove that item, it would cause that glitch that you saw before. So to prevent that, we're gonna add another conditional, basically saying, okay, if the player didn't lose it in the beginning, we're gonna take it away from them now. Basically how we did like the, the glass panes. So if we go in survival, there we go. Again, I'll show you, take the item, it goes away. We don't get the other item because we don't have enough gold. Okay, so finally, the craft a sword thing. So this requires two diamonds and one stick, so I just went ahead and grabbed those. All right, so now we're gonna go to the housing menu, go to the functions, again, once again, blah, blah, blah. Go to conditional. Inside here, we're gonna add a bunch of conditionals that basically say if the player has the sword, as well as the two diamonds. And because this is more than one, we're gonna make sure required mount is set to equal or greater. Otherwise, this would work with just one diamond. And then another item, the stick. So if player has all three items, then we'll remove all the three items. So the sword, the diamonds, and the stick. And we have to give them a normal sword. So actually, just to tell the difference, we'll spawn in a gold sword. Um, and then we'll give them a gold sword. So that they're true. Now, again, now again, if the player has a sword but doesn't have these two things, it'll bug out and keep the sword for us. So we're going to add another conditional, basically saying, okay, if this player still has the sword, um, then we'll just remove it from their inventory. All right, so back in survival, we can open the chest, and here we go. We have our sword, but we don't have any of the materials. So let's shift, left-click it, and there it goes. It disappears. 
But now if we spawn in two diamonds and one stick and go into survival, we can open the chest, shift click the sword, bring it into our inventory. It removes all the items and gives us the golden sword. Okay, so I know you guys have been asking for this tutorial for a while, so I wanted to get it out for you guys. The next tutorial will be a mod tutorial showcasing all the different mods I use for housing to really just kind of make coding and stuff easier. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe. If you need any support with this video, you could join the Discord or ask in the comments. However, the Discord will probably be easier. There's a link in the description. Also, I do live streams uh, because it's summer now. I try to do them pretty much every day at around 2, starting from 2 uh, to 4 p.m. EST. So if you want to be part of those, we do like events, giveaways, a bunch of fun stuff. So you want to be part of those, then definitely join the Discord and get the uh, ping for upload or stream rolls um, or just turn on notifications for the streams. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.